Thank you. Hi. Look, Mom, I'm on the internet. Um, hi, I'm Brett Burmeister with foodcartsportland.com. Uh, I tweet at uh, PDX Food Carts, and uh, my personal is uh, Diesel Boy. Um, I've been uh, doing the food carts thing in Portland for about three years now, four years now. We started the blog in 2007. We uh, have about 8,000 fans on Twitter. You guys will add the next uh, couple hundred, please. And uh, we follow about um, just a little bit less than that. When we started out on Twitter, one of the first things that we did was just kind of, like everybody did, it was trying to figure out how to use this tool. And we had, had all these people following us that had nothing to do with food, so we didn't necessarily follow them back. When, you know, now it's like you need to, when you're using it as a brand or as a business, you follow back everybody because you want to engage with them. One of the things that the food carts do uh, with Twitter is they use it to uh, get out their specials, get out their hours. They use it to engage with their audience, um, send photos of food. Uh, who here takes photos of food? See? Yeah, yeah. See? You know, there are people on CNN and Fox who make fun of us. But uh, those photos sell for a lot of money out there, and that's why I recently changed from Twitpic. But um, one of the things is that people really love engaging with, um, with the pictures. Um, that's been very successful for us. It's very successful for some of the very specific carts who decide to fo take photos of their food and set it out. It entices people to come along, come, come by and try their food. Um, we really started to see an explosion of the carts using Twitter around 2008 when we saw an explosion of the carts. In 2008, we went from about uh, 350 food carts to 450 food carts, and then since then we've moved up to 600. About 300 of those food carts are available any given day. Um, about, out of those, we have about 130, 140 carts that actively tweet. So it's a good 50%. There, there are a lot of food carts out there that are not ever going to get onto social media or even have websites. They're usually ethnic carts. They're uh, older people who uh, have had a car for 50 years or, or they, you know, they're not tech savvy. We try to bring them into the fold. We try to give them advice. Uh, I try to offer them up help uh, so they don't understand Twitter. It's like, huh, what, what? I went to the bathroom, what, huh? You know, um, that's, what, that's, uh, that's some of the perceptions out there. Um, early on, some of the real uh, embracers of Twitter, uh, they mentioned at Wiffy's, um, Greg, Greg uh, Abbott uh, of Wiffy's Fried Pies. He dove in, and he was also a techie guy. He understood technology. He understood Twitter, and he really engaged his customers, both food-wise with the cart, but then he also engaged them in the tech community. And once he launched, his first, one of, one of the times I talked with him, he said, uh, I'll, I'll plan on probably opening the cart, seeing how it goes, you know, and then, you know, take a few days off a week to work on things and, and kind of, you know, revamp the cart and do some things. Uh, he hasn't been able to close the cart yet, and it's been almost three years. He's now expanding to a second cart. I mean, it took off, and that first summer, I remember he, seeing on the, on, on the Twitters, I say, uh, on Twitter, all of the different geek events that were happening at the cart, whether it's a pie off, uh, I think Aaron Hockley won one year. Um, you know, all these different events come on out to help support uh, uh, CubeSpace. Uh, a dollar from all the different uh, pies go to CubeSpace. I mean, how better can you use a t the tool Twitter to gain your audience? And he continues to uh, grow that audience um, uh, every day with his tweets. Another big proponent of Twitter in the, first, in the early days was Koi Fusion, Bo Kwan, followed the uh, LA food trucks uh, model, where in LA and most other cities in the nation, you have to use social media to get your audience to know where you're gonna be, because the trucks move around. We don't have that problem in Portland, so, um, but Bo did start off with a truck. He was driving around, and so he used Twitter to build up an audience even before he opened, and then once he uh, launched, he was like, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm here, and he'd actually have lines. Um, and I, the reason I say it that way is that we don't normally have lines at the food carts. There are, few car there are only a few carts that have lines because we have so many. Um, but Bo really un understood it, and again, he's one that's used the tool and the medium to grow his empire. He has about three or four different locations now. 
Um, some other ways that we have used Twitter, um, we, on our blog, we attempt to post at least once a day, if not more, and then we spread the word, um, not automatically, I know that there are widgets out there to do that, but I like to keep the voice as a voice instead of a robot. Um, and when there are multiple uh, social media mechanisms, um, what's that, uh, th that other one, uh, Facebook. Um, and then if you're sitting there reading Twitter and then you hop over to Facebook and you see the exact same thing, I, I actually kind of get bored of that. So we try not to do that, but we do post what we wrote on the blog and it drives traffic to our, to our site, which then drives revenue. So that's another way that we use Twitter. We've seen some examples of where Twitter uh, can be used for evil, um, uh, I, in a good way. Um, I uh, visited a wonderful food cart, Addie's Sandwiches, a, few, uh, a couple years ago. She was an early adopter of, of uh, Twitter, and um, she, she was one of those carts that was early in the artisan food, uh, really trying to change the game of what we expect for food carts. I went, had an amazing, I believe it was uh, Gruyere and Brie with some chocolate sauce on it sandwich. And I wrote this post and I posted it on Friday. Kind of got an email later on in the day going, ah, th 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 thanks for the, for the nice words. Please warn me next time. Because she was sold out in like an hour. Because she wasn't prepared for the amount of people. There have been other times when I've been at a food cart that's brand new at about 11.45 and tweeted, hey, new food cart, and tweeted a photo of it, whether it's a hamburger or whatever, and they've sold out by 1 o'clock. Uh, whenever the food carts tell me that whenever we retweet their specials, they sell out. And uh, it's, it, it's become a mechanism where people are watching between 10 and 11.30 going, what am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to eat for lunch? And, uh, and I, I, I try to spread the love, uh, even to carts that don't even have Twitter. Um, we, 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 we try to use our, our power for good, not evil. Um, Twitter is the, it, it continues to redefine itself. Uh, now with video, um, you have uh, breaking news, all that stuff. We're all seeing it. Uh, I, I love it that the media, <laughs> the mainstream media, now discovers Twitter and they actually say it without cringing. It, is it the t Twitter? Um, and so, and th it just rolls off their tongue. Um, we get engaged by ma mainstream media via our Twitter stream every so often. Most recently, foxnews.com. Cue the laughter. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful tool to engage. And um, they talked earlier about uh, meeting people. I'll be walking down the street and people are like, oh, you're the food car guy. And it's because they, they figure out that the truck actually is a person and uh, we, we do our best. So, you know, Twitter, um, food carts, food, photos, uh, they all go hand in hand. And uh, thank you very much.